Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy, and I'm Jonathan, this is the third tutorial uh, on uh, creating a Sudoku solver. Uh, first for that quick bug fix, it was actually easy in this case, I'm very glad it was. You'll notice if you scroll down to this validity, I'll make sure this says grid. I know at the end I typed in user grid to test something. Make sure uh, print is grid. Okay, down here on this making a square, I did times and I didn't type in three. Some of you might have typed in three and therefore it worked. Um, but uh, programs don't think. Um, they uh, only do exactly what you say. And so you run into all sorts of problems where you thought it would be obvious what it was supposed to do and it just precisely followed your instructions. Kind of like I can uh, give you directions to my house and even if I make a couple detail mistakes on uh, on the exact color of some uh, landmark or something, you can still figure it out. Um, but uh, a program would uh, be completely lost or it would just uh, freeze up and quit, um, depending on the error. And so uh, that's uh, how program works. And some it can be used to great advantages, but uh, it also has uh, no fun to debug sometimes. Um, like my chess engine, uh, which I will be later giving a detailed tutorial on as uh, uh, one of those things where I've gone through so many bug fixing episodes that it's uh, really uh, a huge job um, to, to create flawlessly. So um, when we times that by three, you can now do the running output and you'll get true because one is not used. But if I were to put one in, let's say, uh, whoop, uh, pressed F1 there. There we go. If I were to put one in its square, for instance, it would return false. That is exactly what we want. And you can do other tests. I believe if we put one in its vertical line, it will produce false. Or, whoop, I should leave that as zero, not blank. And if we produce, uh, put one there, we will also get false. So, and if we produce a zero there, obviously that's false because it's checking are there any other zeros and you know, yes there are. So, that is basically how that works. Um, the next operation that we will be doing is we'll be creating a loop is what we'll call it. Um, we'll make a, a loop and this will loop through all possibilities using uh, our read and thread if I at all pronounced that correctly. Um, and what we will create is a public, static, and will we be returning anything? I, let's see, um, yes, we will be returning uh, something, but let's leave it as void for now, since we're not too worried, and we will just call it loop. And we'll input the same things that Validity did. So if you just copy that uh, and put that all in there so nicely. And this time, although this is not conventional, uh, the way I had written it down is Y and X. So this really needs some uh, uh, fine tuning. This uh, I, It bothers me when this is Y, X, and that's X, Y, because that's one more thing to wrap your head around this inconsistency thing. But anyway, that is roughly what our loop is going to look like. And if you did if you did want to put in instead of uh, uh, void, it will eventually return uh, return the grid. And the grid will of course in the end be return grid. Um, after it's done its modification. So the loop will go through all possibilities and return the loop. And here, this uh, tutorial, we won't be actually uh, filling in this loop program, but instead what I want to show you is what, how this uh, program is going to think. What it's going to do is basically, uh, for now, uh, this will be modified later on, since this only works for uh, blank Sudokus, it will be checking if this is a uh, uh, if this is smaller if it goes to the first digit 
it starts at zero zero and says, well, if it's smaller than nine, increase it by one. And if it's nine, set it to zero and go back one. And the third rule, if it's invalid, increase it by one. So here, this is how those three rules would be applied in the program. Uh, it would say, okay, set this to one. That would be the first step. It sets it to one and says, ah, is this valid? Well, the answer would be yes. So only one in the row, column, or square. So it says go to next since we haven't reached nine. Check this one. Is it uh, set to one? Is that valid? No. So increase it to two. Is that valid? Yes. And this one will go through one, two, and three. And then it'll go next and four and five and six and seven and eight. And now it hits nine. And they're all valid. Now, nine is okay. It's valid. It goes to the next one and tries a one. Then it tries a two because none of these are working. Then it tries a three. That doesn't work still in the square. Then tries a 4 and that works. That's valid. And then a 5 and then a 6. And then tries this one as a 1 and that works. A 2 and a 3. And just in case you think we'll just keep going row by row without going back here, uh, very mistaken, because check out this. It's going to try a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And none of those will be valid because they're in its current row. Then it'll try 7, 8, and 9 and those are in its square. So it's going to rack up, trying each number, it'll rack up to 9, still invalid at 9, and therefore it'll set this to 0, and it'll go back 1 and increase it to 4. Now if this were to hit eventually 9, which it will, it'll set that one to 0, and go back and increase this one. And eventually it'll find out that 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3 is uh, not ideal for solving this. And it'll change all those. And that's basically the logic. And the way we'll tell it to stop is when the very last number it puts in is valid and this spot is valid. Because so far, through all of those checks, if the check at 8, 8, this last square, would always be not valid because there are other zeros in the row column square. So that is just a basic on the logic, and that's all I really wanted to uh, show you is this is how we're going to program it. For the adventurous ones of you, we uh, feel free to try to come up with your own code. Modify my code. My code, I do not profess it to be ideal, um, especially this uh, latest validity. I already see many things that I could improve upon, and that's just the nature of programming. Um, this is not to say my way is the best way. It's just to say this is a way you could approach it and please try to improve it and learn upon it and uh, build upon it. So uh, that's all. Until next time, enjoy Java.